What's going on, guys? As you may all know, the podcast is officially out on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course, YouTube. We are an ad-free podcast as of right now, but if you would like to support the podcast channel, make sure to go and get your On My Pod merch. It would truly mean the absolute world for myself and the entire production team for you guys to support the channel. That being said, catch us every Saturday at 9 a.m. with new episodes. We love you guys. Thank you for the support. It truly means the world. And, well, continue to watch On My Pod. This is it. This is the last time we're going to be on an On My Block set, as far as I know. And this is it. And then it just it just hit me, bro. It just, you know, there's something powerful about using what's in front of you and what you real you know the real uh emotional life that, that you're going through in life and then incorporating that with your acting in the scene for me at least that's how i approach stuff because because there's there's nothing more beautiful than the truth man no matter how ugly how beautiful how whatever there's nothing more beautiful than the raw truth yeah. and that was we left it there that day man both of us and then you turn into a gnome and then <laughs> i turn into a gnome i have that gnome yeah. in my house oh, yeah. by the way really <laughs> i had to i had to listen i get so many dms every single day and they're like when season five coming out when season five i'm like well you know it's, it's kind of done and honestly at least you'd be in season five yeah <laughs> at least you would be in people come up to me and they're like Yo, who killed yeah, spooky can, can we can we get season five i want to watch that like i loved your character like i can't wait to see him in season five like you clearly didn't watch season four yeah i know i know yeah. <laughs> people dm me when season four coming out i'm like it's out what you mean yeah. to say is when season five coming out yeah. i was talking to jess about it though it was weird because we never got like that closure we never got we never got a premiere for fourth season for third mm -hmm. season we got the the taco premiere for the sex that was, that was dope <laughs> but uh better than nothing um but uh but yeah i always felt like we never got that closure that like we didn't even have like a rap party right um so this for me is kind of like a tribute kind of like giving it back to the fans hey um we're getting together one last time not one last time yeah, but yeah. one last time for the pod and uh and we're gonna relive some moments and relive uh you know some of the history we share you know it's just yeah. for the for the fans, you know, dude, I'm about it. I mean, yeah. that, it, it's uh, it was a great show as performers. It, it gave us something to, you know, um, a foundation for me, uh, at yeah, least, yeah, to learn. Uh, even though I should have been, you know, <laughs> but nothing same. teaches you more than your first job, for sure. But yeah. you know, for 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 everyone, for all of us. I mean, I, I was working before, so was Jessica, and so were you know all all yeah. of yeah. the big majority of the cast, but what it allowed us to do for four seasons was kind of like grow and create and, and, mm. and mold these characters into the, all these different iterations of themselves, which I thought was really cool. And I liked that for the most part, the, um, the creators and, and, you know, Lauren, Jeremy and Eddie, and they, they all were very, uh, supportive and encouraging of just like looking for and discovering different ways to play them and then bringing us back to what the fans mm. loved it's like all right yeah. go explore what you think this would and then and then come back you know to, yeah that's come back take, to what man. people fell in love with in mm. season one right yeah um because you see that a lot in in, in shows you know you, you start watching something and then they've evolved and yeah. you you like the evolution but you're like oh i have this nostalgia for season yeah. one i know right? everyone's always like season one was my yeah. favorite i'm like damn uh, to me I, at least in my yeah, own yeah. i was like i sucked in season one <laughs> i hate season one i was like i hate i can't watch that uh season two yeah, i like you season know? two season two i think was was, was yeah. peak, in, in my opinion peak spooky um mm. The cinematography was the cinematography was beautiful, great. Man. Uh, Tommy Maddox, shout out to Tommy. But it was before that that transition, at least for my character, it was before that the beginning of that transition. So mm. it was we were introduced to him in season one, and then season mm. two we got to see him sort of roll. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, and then that, do you think that's your favorite season, season two? That's my favorite season personally. I I loved. Uh, the storyline, not even just my storyline or Caesar's storyline, like everyone's storyline. It was just, it was just nice to see, uh, you know, still keeping the roots to the co the comedic like sense, yeah. but but also like explore even Jess. Mm -hmm. We were talking about where like her dad has the PTSD, all that stuff. Like that was it was it was uh it was good for us as artists to be able to work on that. Yeah, and also play like the fun stuff. You know, it was yeah, it was a happy medium for me. I, I love that season the most. I don't, I don't, what about I you? I didn't get much fun stuff. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you no, got, no. You always me, get the yeah, dog yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, me and yeah. Brett got to play. Oh, you did? Yeah, uh, yeah bro, yeah. the graveyard scene? Yeah, the graveyard scene. That was stuff, hilarious. Yeah. What's That's the line? Great. Yeah, you go in there. Yeah. He's like, why don't you go in there? He's like, I don't want to catch a ghost. I don't want to catch and a he's ghost. Like, Your name is Spooky and yeah. you're scared of catching a ghost? <laughs> no. That's what my favorite when he started were... walking backwards. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was such a good scene. Yeah. Your guys' chemistry was just so funny, right? Well, that's just, you... I mean, just because. In real life, too. But like, yeah, on... me and Brett spent a lot of time together. Dude, so. on screen, that was just so, so, uh, it was like the complete opposite, right? Yeah. And, and then when your two worlds collide, it was just, it's interesting to see. Always. I also, I always felt, you know, given the right opportunity, um, Jamal would throw hands oh, yeah. with with Spooky. Oh, not that yeah, he would with Spooky. Not that, not that he, he would win. Not that he would win, but like <laughs> but he would throw he, it. <laughs> he, he, he would he would be like, Psh, come on. You know, everyone else had like yeah. this thing. He was the only one that kind of like mm. came out. I mean, obviously besides you know Caesar, but oh, yeah. he was he was the only one that would be like, you ain't shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he take back the donuts in that one scene? He did take did back take the donuts. Back? Yeah. Was that written? Or was that did no, he improvise no. that? He, that day he That's just so yeah. Brett's great at that kind of stuff, <laughs> though. No, I mean yeah. all around, Brett's a, a very present player. Yeah, you know anything that uh, I've worked with him on mm. or that I've seen him do, it seems that he's very present in the scene mm. looking for gifts to either take or give yeah you know uh to, yeah he's to, a great to, scene partner to, to different actors and and yeah when was the first time you guys met was that the chemistry ring yeah was that the first time you saw him too yeah oh shoot okay yeah oh man that was a day bro that was a day that was before a day. i went over there before we went to the audition i was listening to this song called uh uh this is the day by oh. the the it was in guardians of the galaxy the new one mm -hmm. and uh you know the the, the lyrics are like this is the day that your life will truly change and i was just like ah it's just another audition but let me just play this song you know maybe i don't know and uh, i remember getting there bro and just seeing everybody i remember getting there late like five minutes late like an idiot mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh because i was just so nervous i couldn't even go into the room bro and uh then once i saw you though and i was like hey are you going in for oscar i was like okay I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna just talk to him and focus on him because I'm I'm way too nervous to connect with the group, and uh, and we started rehearsing it, and that really settled me in, bro. Mm -hmm. So I really have to say thank you because I was I was too nervous to even go inside the room, like <laughs> super nervous, bro. He, that you know that was how a, did you feel going into that into that audition, into the chemistry read? Excited but jaded. How so jaded? Uh. By that point, I had opened. Uh, I think in 2013, I had I had opened a a production company, mm. and so I had been doing music videos, commercials. Um, how we shot a movie? Yeah, we shot a movie at that point for eighty thousand dollars. Which mm. now, looking back, I'm you know <laughs> I was so hard on myself, and then now, now I'm like, dude, you shot a movie for eighty grand. Um, Good for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bro. But, it, you know, I was excited that it was a chemistry read, you know. So yeah. I, I won I, when I read the edition the, sides. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I think I took it as an opportunity to to, to go for it, if you will. Yeah. Uh, they seemed to really like me in the in the first room. Mm -hmm. And then they brought me in for the chemistry room. So I was excited yeah. that, you know, it was more than just a callback that I was, you know, moving up in the ranks. But I had, oh man, I, you know, I got to shoot Victor Manuel in like two weeks. And mm. then we got this thing with Prince Royce. Mm. And so I had like all these so your other, mind was somewhere else. Yeah. Like, like you were there present, but you I were like, there. okay, I'm going to do this. And then I got to go back then to Then I got to go reality, back to, yeah. Right? Yeah. To, okay. to, 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 to my job. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. I remember that day so vividly. Oh man. Uh, I remember that day so vividly because of your attitude. Yeah. Um, which worked so well for Caesar, but also, you know, in a, in a, in a way, um, man, you manifested that, yeah. you know, you really came in and you said, this is mine. Yeah. I'm going to take it. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> I might've been a little much. Yeah. yeah. I'm, ex I'm so sorry, <laughs> you know, X, X and X and X, uh, yeah. but this is mine. Uh, <laughs> and you know, it was me and David, uh, Castañedas. Yeah. I remember that he was going yeah, for spooky yeah. as well. Yeah. There's this, this sense of if you win, we all win. 
Yeah. So there is that friendly competitiveness, but yeah. there isn't the better stay out of my way, better stay out of mm. my way. It was, it's more of like, there are so few roles, leading roles with depth and heart for uh, Latinos. Mm. And there are so few Latinos in the game, mm. right? The fact that we're very supportive of each other you know i feel like this community is it's like we ride or die for each other right yeah um we go up against each other all the time for the same roles and you know dude i auditioned for for the one piece role uh yeah you know recently i auditioned for the main Uh for the role of that terrible tape i was i was like doing like a million different projects at the time Mm -hmm. but as soon as i saw it and i saw the lead was mexican i forgot i don't know how to say his name inyaki or inaki i'm Mm -hmm. not sure exactly uh, great actor, right? Uh, I DM'd him. And I was like, hey, brother, you're 20 years old. Your show just came out. This is a huge hit. Here are some pointers <laughs> I wish I got when my show came out. And these are just to benefit you because I want to see you win. Yeah, I want to see you triumph. I want to see you uh, just be a megastar. And if you win, we all win. Yeah, we're all supported. What's for you is for you. What's for me is for me. And I'm gonna get mine, and you're gonna get yours. And yeah, man, we're gonna fucking win. Um, yeah. Even with Thomas over at you know yeah. Gentified, Carlos yeah. Santos and, and JJ Soria, we, we, we we've right. talked about this idea of JJ says this all the time. Where what you said, you know, what's yours is yours, and what's mine is mine. <sighs> and that's what I really enjoy about this community. That yeah. every time that we see each other at events or whatnot, it's it's very warm. It's very friendly. It's very Always. like. Dude, like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, you got that, man. I wanted that so bad. Hey, you're yeah. gonna kill it, right? Yeah. Um, so that's very cool. But at that, at that chemistry read, I remember you coming in with this. Um, well, now we know that it was a wall and a facade, but with this demeanor. <laughs> yeah, I was so I was so nervous, bro. <laughs> but this demeanor of like, I got this, right? And then the minute that that like you said, you you walked in and we kind of locked eyes. Yeah. And it was a uh, uh, Caesar, and then you put it back, Oscar, yeah. and we were like, mm. and then like I David was sitting right next to me, so you yeah. could have like looked at him, but yeah. for some reason that was the connection, right? I saw him and I was like, he's yeah, great act, cool looking dude. But I was like, yeah, this but this is this mira mano, it's this mira mano, and you no, and you know what it was? It was the black shirt, the blue jeans, and the bands, bro. Right. And I looked down, I'm like, orale, orale, let's go, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, from that moment on, we you know we we vibed at that at that in that room, and I think that after we cast together, it was okay. Yeah. I had a little bit more confidence of like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, if this goes, like, yeah. We, we went to Tacos Gavilan, remember? Yeah, dude. Yeah, we yeah. had the conversation. I was like, I think we got it. I was like, I think we got that. Dude, and I, you're like, yeah, dude, I, was, I, I don't know. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was talking to Shannon right before I came here, and I was like, yeah, I, I, like, I remember that day, but like Diego always brings it up. She's like, yeah, because you were like old and jaded by that time. I was like, I was 28. I wasn't like old, I do remember old. the day. You are yeah. just like. Yeah, kid, just shut up. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I was no, like, no, 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 I wasn't that. I wasn't no, like that. It's because I was annoying that. Yeah. I was like, dude, do you think we got it? And you're like, maybe. I was Probably. like, no, but like, I think we got it. Do you think we got it? And you're like, yeah. I'm just trying to eat my burrito, man. Yeah, if we get it, that would be a yeah. lot of fun, yeah. bro. Like, that would be yeah. really cool. Um, And then we, and then, yeah, and then we got yeah, it. We got and, uh, and then from that moment on. And I remember uh, someone had asked me recently, like, what was it like? uh walking on set for the first time mm. and it was uh people because of the way that i looked at the time mm. people assuming that i was somebody that i wasn't mm. um and so giving me this weird respect and space yeah um except for you who like had me like yo you and then <laughs> and then like oh man like Shit, he's like really close with he's not getting yeah. in trouble with you know uh no you know and that so that was like this <laughs> yeah this interesting weird adjustment um i think within the first week everyone's like oh okay yeah he's an actor all right cool 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 cool. (laughs) yeah yeah i think i remember you know uh uh there was an incident with with somebody who's like oh you're not a real you're not a real this and you're like and you and you're like yeah i'm an i'm playing a character i'm an actor playing a role so serving the role Um, serving the story emilio Emilio was the one that called this this extra out. Mm. This extra, um, and you know what? 
How how well, how was that, bro? I like get, I I get it. I get yeah. it. Like I I because I'm sure it happened offset too, right? It happened no. to me, dude. It happened to me when I sh- when you shaved my head in, uh-huh. in episode in season one, episode ten. I remember leaving my apartment complex, and at the time I was living like not like the greatest area, right? Yeah, I remember. And, and, yeah, and some some you know this dude, but he was like, he's like, what's up, mother? You know, and I was like, hey, bro, like I'm just an actor, you know. <laughs> I didn't even say that because I was like, ah, I was just like. I was like, bro, it's just hot outside, you know? And he's like, no, where you from? Where you from, dog? And I was like, it ain't like that, bro. I'm just trying to pay my bills, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah. But uh, for you, how how was it? Um, You know, I never got some sort of confrontation like that um, outside a set. Hmm. Um, I also carry myself very differently, mm. you know? Uh, and whenever I do have, uh, conversations with people, I'm, I'm, I'm very honest that I, you know, I, I, I do my research and I, and I, yeah. and I'm very, I try to be as respectful as I possibly can. Mm. Um, and I make no false claims of being from anywhere that I'm not. What I thought was really cool was Emilio, um, Chivo. <laughs> Y'all know who Emilio, is. Uh, Emilio, uh, he was there and yeah. uh an extra was she wasn't even like directly talking to like m- about me yeah you know it's like this is all fake y'all fucking fake and this and this and that mm. you know mm. this guy's fake for sure you know and i was like i mean <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm make believe i don't know if i'm <laughs> fake but like yeah. this character is make believe right yeah um and then emilia was like <laughs> Nah, man. Like you know, he's real. Mm. He's he's doing something for the betterment of not only himself but for his for his uh, community and this and that. Yeah. And he went off on her. And Emilio, like he's an OG man, and he's oh, got sure. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so for him to back me up, yeah. I mean, and did I didn't, you guys really like know each other at the time? No, no, oh, no, 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 no. We didn't know each other. He was oh, just sitting whoa. there and like you know and and. Wow. That might have been one of the first interactions, but he was just sitting there mm. and he's like, you know That's what's dope, you know what's really cool, you know man. what's real? Mm. Bettering yourself. You know what's real? Mm. Educating yourself. You know what's real? You know, blah, blah, blah. and mm. um I don't know if the message came across to, to her or not. I hope it, that it did. Yeah. Um I understood, you know, quite well, you know, why this 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 the the the, the frustration, you know, that was directed and it wasn't even directed at me it was directed just in, in general at the, at the show right yeah. um because you know it's funny <laughs> people are like where'd you shoot that in the hard streets of burbank <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's always a fun answer they're yeah. like wait you shot that in burbank like, yeah, i'm like burbank. downtown burbank <laughs> yeah, up, right? yeah um people would drive by our house yeah and like oh shit that's spooky's house. and i think that was season one so yeah the, you know the impact of what that show became mm. obviously didn't exist so it was yeah. just another at that time it was just another production pretending yeah. to be something that it might not be yeah even though at the end of the day hey what's going on guys really quick i wanted to hop on here and say a huge thank you to everybody who tuned into today's episode your support truly means the world to myself and our crew and well i made this podcast essentially to inspire educate or at the very least entertain those who tune in from all around the world As of right now, we are an ad-free channel. However, if you would like to support the podcast, make sure to check out sangremia.store and check out all the On My Pod merch we got on there. We got hoodies, t-shirts, hats, coffee mugs, and so much more. Again, huge thanks to everybody for hopping on here and supporting the channel. It truly means the world. And well, that being said, let's get back to the episode. Adios. It could have very because projects have came out like that. Yeah. Where it's like, ah, oh, that's corny. Why are you guys doing us like that? Right. And that wasn't well, the effect that the show I had. I think right? in my, a lot in of my opinion, I it. think that the fact that the show was so corny, yeah, that it was a comedy. I, I that see what you're saying. Was, it was like owning the comedic beats and all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it was showing you a different side of the coin, but also giving it, you like- It was a satire. It was yeah. a comedy. It was yeah. a commentary. It hmm. wasn't, I mean, it, we took ourselves serious, right? But the show itself wasn't taking itself seriously. Yeah. Right? So I think that that was able to give people that that distance, right? That's true. That distance, yeah. 
Yeah, it, it gave it room to breathe. It wasn't like, oh, here's another one of those stories. This guy right, trying right, to be hard. Right. This guy trying to do this. You know. Uh, yeah, exactly. no, that makes you sense. Know, it's like I was, I was the big bad in the comedy. Yeah, <laughs> and you had <laughs> funny, and yeah. you had funny moments in uh. Yeah, uh, what was it? Was it the lockdown? Was it the lockdown? The lockdown. Season yeah. one. I mean, I mean you had a bunch still of trying to find season my two. Boys, yeah, yeah. I think we all were. Yeah, dude. we were all trying to find. We our were all then. trying to find it. My first day shooting, I was so fucking nervous. I didn't sleep the night before. I remember getting there. I was as pale as a ghost. Hadn't seen sunlight because mm -hmm. I was just like reading my lines over and over again. But I remember the first day after I met Brett, Sierra. Jason, mm -hmm. Eddie, Jeremy, like after really being on set with them, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna be all right. Yeah. I mean, I, I got that, but then it'd always be like, wait, it no, I'm gonna get fired. I'm it gonna took, get fired. It took you a while. It was always you like, were, yeah. Now you were, your character was very much, and I think this is what we were talking about, uh, people hyper-focusing on mm -hmm. like one performance. I think in season one, you were so hyper-focused on your performance yeah that you not that you didn't read the script mm. but you didn't pay attention to the script dude i was you know yeah. you're like i was just so nervous to do good yeah right? as an actor you're like did i do good right i would get one line and i'd try to milk it so hard mm. and then lauren would be like hey like what are you doing it's just a line like just mm -hmm. just throw it away just throw it away just yeah throw it away. it's like what why would i throw this yeah. away and but that's like, something because it's a comedy and you're part of that exactly comedy, you know? but but i feel like a lot of actors sometimes like They'll get they'll, they'll get like a small piece of dialogue and they'll be like, finally, I get to act. I finally get to. And it's like, hey, the best acting seems seamless. Mm -hmm. The best acting seems like it's 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 real life, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, for you approaching your role, like, what was your method? What was the? How did you approach it? You know, did you have like a? I know, but I you yeah. know I don't know what was going on in here, but I saw it. Like I uh, guess now now it, now it doesn't truly matter because I think that there's there's you know, uh, with podcasts and people being so open about, you know, what they do for their process and whatnot. And, yeah. and, uh, I think it's a little bit more accepted, but there mm -hmm. was a time where, you know, uh, to say that you were an outside in actor was like, Oh, you're fake. So you don't care about the mm -hmm. emotions. You should really focus in on what's going on in here and that'll inform everything. And I was like, okay, that's great. That, will, that mm -hmm. works for you. Mm -hmm. For me, I, and maybe this is my producer brain. Maybe yeah. this is like my, you know, uh, up here looking down and mm. I need, I need to see what it looks like before I can kind of, uh, feel it, smell it, taste it. You know, yeah. um, I, I needed to look a certain way. I needed to not, I needed to look in the mirror and, and not remind myself of, of me. Mm. Right. Um, so for me, it was all physical in the beginning. Mm. It was, uh, I need to look a certain way. I need yeah. to come across as a certain way. Yeah. Um, and you put on some, yeah, some yeah. like pounds for that. 20 bro. pounds. Yeah. yeah, bro. And in between um, takes, you were lifting the yeah. fucking weights. You were lifting but, the But, you know, I went from like a, you know, a, a relatively skinny Mexican kid to like this, yeah. you know, as, as bulked as I could. Suave, handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just because I needed to get away from me to to make me believe that this was going on. Yeah. Then when that once that happened, um, simultaneously while I was training my body to look a certain way, um, I knew that I couldn't, with my life experience, there wasn't a substitution strong enough that could justify. Um, the life that Oscar had lived thus far. Mm. Um, I mean, I could use some, but like not, mm -hmm. not to that extent. Yeah. So I went a little bit more of an intellectual route with it where I um, informed myself. I mean, I'm, I'm not a history buff, but I definitely like history. So I started researching the Chicano movement. I started researching mm. the, the, the Mexican American experience. You know, I'm an immigrant myself. I was born in Mexico City. Yeah. So you know, I, was, I know, bro. Yeah. yeah, you were born in Mexico, man. Yeah. Not too many people know this about um, you. Yeah, and so like I, you know, I, 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 I pulled experiences of like of what my experience like was growing up and mm. putting it in a different context and putting it in a different time, um, understanding how. Um, gangs uh, evolved from protective 
uh, literally to protective protect their groups. community. Yeah, That's protective right. groups because you know we were completely neglected by the by, by the government. Yeah. Um, to the 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 twisted versions that we you know see and experience now. Mm. Um, so I try to uh, intellectually get there, and I think yeah. that I I did enough research and I spoke to enough people to get the gist that I was like, I'm never going to get it right. But as long as I play this with respect and I give this character dignity, mm. um, a redeemable quality, not redeemable in the sense of like, he's not a bad person. Yeah. Right? He can still be a bad person or do bad things. But with, um, with a through line of because of this, you justify well, it. I justify it. Yeah. Real internal life. Yeah. And it wasn't just doing the actions on the paper. It was, hey, you need to do this because, and you had because history behind it. Because this happened to my father, exactly. to my grandfather, to my great grandfather. There was history to, behind you know, it. Yeah. A lot of actors that make the mistake, it's like they just do what's on paper. They just see it mad. It's like, no, no, why, yeah. why are you getting mad? Are you jealous? Is it coming out of frustration? Is it coming out of from history? And you did your work, right. bro. And I mean, and, you and, really did your character work, bro. And then, and then there's the idea of you know when you're when you're when you're mad at somebody, you yell at them. When you're mad at somebody that you love, way more interesting. You try to suppress that anger. Exactly. Right. Uh, it's, it's like when they tell you like what's more interesting crying or holding back tears it's holding like back holding tears. back tears because you know yeah it's watching watching somebody trying to suppress their the the heartbreak in them while they're talking and then finally cracking yeah will always be more interesting than the actor who's like i want to cry <laughs> yeah it's like dude uh, yeah, yeah so like uh, <laughs> it wasn't until i put on the chain that i was like oh i'm here yeah i'm present um 100%. Let's go. Let's roll. Hundred um, percent, bro. What I also the love the idea that that the uh, the directors, for the most part, sort of let me go. They're like, "Yeah, dude, I don't. Yeah, go say yeah. the lines, and then like I'll give, I'll tweak you here in this way, 100%. but like don't. Yeah, you know what's funny, man? You're talking about like getting the character right from the external first. Uh, something I really struggled with, man, and I'll always like, I'll always have this kind of chip on my shoulder about it was uh. In season four, I I wanted to shave my head so badly months before shooting because I was like, I have to see it. I don't think I don't think uh, I explained myself um, as detailed as I probably should have. But I was like, man, I uh, if I shave my head on the day, I understand you guys need the flashback stuff. But if I shave my head on the day, midday, I, I don't know if I can just snap into it. And I really, really struggled with that. And then, you know, I, the season came out and, and, uh, you know, I just saw so many flaws in my performance and I was like, this could have been better. I don't know why I did that. And a big part of it for so me you was, never I watch I, yourself, dude. I, <laughs> I'm never you again, it and you never again, dude. <laughs> but a big part of it was like, I, I just, you know, no, no complaints. Now I know now I'll, I'll never make that mistake again, but I just, I, I just, it was so hard for me to get in the, in the headspace, man. It was so hard because we shot the flashback stuff. We shot like when Caesar yeah. gets mad at Spooky, when when Caesar gets mad at his friends, and I felt good on, on. I felt like I knew that character, but dude, I did not know season four Caesar. I, I did not know him at all. And I remember go, going to the producers and everybody. I was like, I was like, this is terrible. I was like, I, I don't know what to do here. And uh, I just remember, man, like watching it. And I was like, I don't know who this guy. Is. That's not this. I don't know. I feel like I, I fucked it up, to be honest, bro. I always, I will always, because uh, there was two ways of playing it. Uh -huh. One, I was going to do it still Caesar, but more, m m less, less like, pinche enojón, you know? Estaba enojado, cabrón, bro. He yeah. was just mad the whole time. And I, I, it's justifiable, yes, but it's, it was, it was for me, it was the, it was the most flat surface choice that I could have picked as an actor and I'll, I'll never forgive myself for that because i could have made him way more dynamic way more cynical and devious but but still carry that charismatic kind of i could have used my strengths more is what i'm trying to say yeah. instead of not to say i'm mr suave there, but like you know there, what i'm saying yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I could I, I have made it more there was something that you did in season one where it you know, it it was before any of this had happened to you and yeah. before you know anything of, before the show came out all this stuff yeah before yeah. before 
anything had happened to Caesar, right? But also before any of this had happened to you. And I know that you've you've asked me this question for you, like your actors and you know. Yeah. Um, I don't want to necessarily discourage anybody from from pursuing this career, but there is something to be said about, you know, hey, you know, my 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 son, he's you know, eleven years old, he's trying to get into it. Hey, my yeah. daughter's fifteen years old, she's trying to get into it. What would you suggest? I'm like, don't don't do it. You know, wait. Yeah. Wait till you're adult. Yeah, I, I understand that there's at twenty at least. Yeah, yeah, I understand that there's more mature children than than yeah. than others, but you're still growing, man. It's dumb. Yeah. Like you know, I'm very happy that 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 yeah. that I that this happened to me. Mm. Um, after I was 25. Yeah, because mm. I at least I feel like I'm like oh okay I I understand what it's yeah. like to be an adult and to have like buffers yeah maybe not the healthiest buffers but no, like there, there are buffers and i saw you grow up man mm. i saw you turn 21 man. i know i saw, yeah. i did the show when i was 19 i entered my 20s yeah. when the show came out yeah and so the I weirdest saw, strangest thing to do and so not only did i see you grow up with in this show i saw you blow up with this show dude yeah and, and to think that that's not going to affect who you are as a 19 year old yeah. um, and that affect your character, mm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of times where there were some performances where they were like, dude, Diego is on one, bro. Mm. He's, he's in that line. He's in yeah. that pocket. And he's killing yeah. it. And there was other ones that they seemed, um, even though they worked, just fine. They were performative. Like, hmm, I feel like he's playing to the fans. I yeah. feel like he's playing to the to the Twitter uh, to the Twitter comments. <laughs> the memes. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, the, yeah, the, like, the posts, the reposts. Yeah, to yeah. like what what he thinks yeah. that the audience wants instead yeah. of what is good for the character. Right. Hundred percent. So serving the story. I always talk about that. Yeah. It's like when an actor tries to serve himself. Being yeah. like a certain way, sounding a certain way, giving this fucking like uh, flat surface performance, it, it never works out. When you serve the story, when you kill the, the not kill the ego, because you do need a bit of an ego to stand in a room of 200 people, all eyes on you. You have to have a little bit of an ego to be like, to you know say, what? I'm the one. I'm the one. I belong <laughs> here. I am interesting enough to give a performance here. So you do need a little bit of an ego there, a healthy ego, right? Um, but, but you have to serve the story as yeah. soon as the actor makes it about himself and how i sound it's like dude what are you doing like serve the character bring it back, bring it. serve the character that will make it interesting yeah. you know the best scenes that i've felt and kind of you know i i didn't hate i guess you can say what i saw were when you sort of black out and mm -hmm. you don't have this robotic like uh pre-planned performance and it's sort of just a daze yeah. and you they call cut and you're just like what did, I, what did I do? I don't. I don't even remember what I did. And then you see those takes back, and you're like, "Oh shit! I, I that was I, that was an interesting choice. I didn't even know that I made that." Yeah. And one scene that really sticks out to me that that I I just felt so loose on because I trusted you as a scene partner. We've created so much uh, chemistry and in, in, in history right on the show. It was in I think it was episode ten of season two, and we're at the we're at the dinner table. And I look at you and I'm like, uh, you know, Oscar, I'm not a killer. Oh, and yeah. that scene was it was one of the most for me, it was one of the most uh, pivotal moments in, in the show because he's finally a little brother telling his older brother, hey, I love you, but this is not who I am. Finally sticking up for, for himself and the brother respectfully taking that in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, but as an actor, being able to perform that, I felt so free in that. And I remember just blacking out and I was like, I just, I just want to serve the story. And when I saw that scene, I was like, okay, that's, that's where my acting should, should go towards. Yeah. So now I'm always striving for that, that moment of, of, uh, just let go, man, surrender, mm -hmm. just surrender, give yeah. it, serve the story and don't worry about uh, all I, the dumb things. Yeah. Unless a director pushes me. Within reason, obviously, because you don't want to be hell for for an editor who's like, yo, I, he, nothing <laughs> matches, man. Yo, shout out to editors, man. I've nothing had some matches. terrible scenes that they just like help me out you with. Know, without, yeah. without being a headache to an yeah. editor, um, I like to give different variations to a performance or a line delivery. You, Yeah, you always serve yeah. variety, bro. Yeah, and always. I'm not I'm not always thankful for it and 
<laughs> maybe rightfully so. But I try to give my scene partner something natural to react to. So if we're mm. having a conversation that I do this, and that's not in the scene, I'm hoping that that's like something that they react to, and then yeah. and then, then we have like an acknowledgement that that's going on because then that makes the scene alive, and it's mm. not just a line reading or a repetition of hey, we already have that take. Yeah. Exactly. You know? we already have the safe version. Like, give me something else. Give yeah, me, let's I let's 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 be in the here. Let's be in the now. Yeah. Sometimes I'll <laughs> I'll ignore um, a scene partner if mm. they're not getting my attention and they're supposed mm. to be getting my attention, mm. right? If they're like, I'm sup I'm right here, and I'm yeah. like, I don't believe. You. <laughs> hey, I'm right here, and, and like, that forces hey, them though. I'm right yeah, here, and I'm like, exactly. Oh, there you are. How there you, doing? you are. Because you then up. that scene is like boom, and then they'll yeah. be, they'll they'll call cut, and they'll be like, yeah. I hate you, <laughs> I hate you, but 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 we're but we're elevated. We're yeah. here, you know. No, a hundred percent, man. You know, one of my favorite scenes with uh with Spooky and 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 Caesar is uh season two episode eight, I believe, when he confronts him and he's fixing his car it's the nighttime and he's like you should handle this for me you're not just my big brother you're my big homie you know and then you're like yo you know how badly you messed up all that bro that that scene it that one freaking crushes me man because it's you're not just playing this three dimension this this uh this flat surface character where you're just like f you kid go away it hurts you it, you could see the hurt in your eyes uh -huh. the frustration but but it was something that you know it it had to be done right. Um, How did you go into that scene with like the emotionality and all that? That's one of my favorite scenes between the brothers right there. Uh, like how did you? Because I I was nervous for that scene. I was really nervous. I, Anytime there's a crying scene, I always get nervous. <laughs> I become an actor, you know. No, I think that for me, um, I remember I I, I remember I, I was like about a I was I think I shoved you in rehearsal. And I told you I was, I'm gonna shove you, and you're like, hey homie, if you shove me. I'm gonna, you know what I mean? You're like, yeah. I'm gonna get physical too. And I was like, and I was like, hell yeah, that's what I'm going yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is really uh, cool. And then it, it read on screen, you know? And yeah. Um, Oscar has three heartbreaks. Mm. The realization that mom's gone and now I'm the caregiver. Mm. Uh, heartbreak two is when I um, leave, mm. right? When I get like picked up and I'm no longer there. This yeah. is before the show, right? Yeah, yeah. And three is um, when I ask you to to take that person out, right? Mm. Um, and that last one is big because of the scene that the beach scene. Yeah, I love the beach scene. Yeah, the beach scene is the first time that we have a conversation as brothers. Yeah. in God knows how long. Yeah, probably before mom died. Right. So we were at some point we were kids playing around, mm -hmm. you know, shooting the shit, mm -hmm. chasing each other, climbing trees, like being kids. Uh, sure, I was older and sure I was exposed to different things that I try to shield you from. Um, but that beach scene is something that I used dude all the way till the end bro mm. like that even when 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 oscar gets gunned down like yeah. uh in my mind's eye you know when i'm looking at you and i'm like let it go mm. um i'm thinking of the beach scene because it's something that we actually shared yeah it's right we were it's a real memory it's a real memory it's a real you julio macias and, yeah. and diego tinoco were there on that mm -hmm. beach shooting that first season yeah. you know reading doing this scene these lines right yeah. um so <laughs> there was no need for a substitution i just i just kind of went back to that place so in that scene that preparation was yeah going going back to that beach scene and, and saying like that is the relation and i and that's why i liked season four it was like i was constantly trying to find that with you again and it never materialized right yeah um, except for when you come at the end, you know, and it's Episode like, five, but we never, right. we never even had like that scene. It was like, we had the promise of having that scene again and it never came. Right. Um, 
So that was something that I always like held close. So like the heartbreak that I always had in, in any of those conversations that we had where you were coming at me, um, it was, I want us to be back on that beach. Mm. I don't know how to drop this. Mm. You know, the, the, the spooky character. I don't know how to drop this. I don't, I, I don't know how to not be this. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, the last season, it's I know how to not be that, but not around you, oh, right? Yeah. Um, no, that makes sense. So, because it's like fourteen years of having to put on this mat, put on this cap, yeah, and be the father figure, be that. How was it shooting that scene where I mean, you played the father right mm -hmm. in Caesar's entire life, mm -hmm. um, but how was it once the father did come back into the storyline and then seeing him leave? How how would you say that's your most challenging scene that you shot emotionally? Seeing your father leave again, the heartbreak, the betrayal, the, the trauma, right? Uh, that, that Oscar experienced, the history. How did you dive into all that? Uh, it was the most challenging because it was, it was put on me that it needed to be the most challenging. I don't know because it mm. not I don't know if by it, you or by by people? by by external forces, right? It wasn't that <laughs> Those that was yeah, yeah the aliens. <laughs> it wasn't yeah by, by the aliens. The aliens said that, this, no, that yeah. that wasn't the hardest scene for because I was like, dude, this is a tough scene. But because of the pressure that is like, hey, this scene, this scene, I was like, mm. I came in that day being like, oh, this is gonna be a good scene. It's like, be, hey, yeah. this scene's super important. I was like, mm. yo, I know, I know. Hey, no, but this scene so it's so fucking heavy and i was like yeah i know and then as the as don't like, mess it up julio yeah no one said that everyone it was like everyone yeah. was more of like we trust you yeah you're gonna kill this you're gonna <laughs> yeah, be amazing and i was like, like that. okay <laughs> yeah let's let's get on with it let's get on what made that day hard was the expectation that people had of being the greatest scene of right? all time right? yeah um the hardest part about that scene mm. <laughs> was doing it multiple times yeah it, it was like Bro. we did the first scene and it was killer yeah like i remember people crying i remember mm. the 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 cam op being like dude that's why <laughs> that's why we're here that's he said that's why we do cinema that's mm. why we do film like mm. your performance is the reason that we all do this shit to capture that <sighs> fucking moment dude that was great <sighs> Anyways, back to one. <laughs> was, oh, yeah. I was like, what? Bro, you got that's, it. You got that's, it. That's the thing, right? I remember yeah. doing the last scene in uh, episode 10 where uh, uh -huh. Caesar seeing uh, the ghost of Spooky, the ghost yeah, of Spooky yeah, yeah, yeah. nights. And uh, yeah, I remember the, the we, it was just fast. We had to go. Shoot, shoot, shoot this angle, that angle, then this angle, boom, 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 boom. And I remember being like, and then I had to like tie a tie. I never tied a tie in my entire life. That was probably that was the most emotional scene for me. Yeah, of the entire series. Yeah, because I, it was it was my last scene on my last day. Oh, that's right. That was your last scene. That was my last scene, my last yeah. day. And then I was watching you through the mirror. I was watching you through the mirror, and I saw I saw you grow up, man. I saw you, I saw you go from eighteen to to, to that. And I was like, damn, dude, this kid did it, bro. He he came up on the other side. Like, that was like... Whoa. We went through some shit, man. Yeah, man. We that went was through shit some was shit. That we shit experienced a lot together, man. Yeah. That was a moment, man. And I remember, uh, you know, people, again, external forces. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> external forces. Being like, oh, you got to cry. This is the scene. And I was like, hold up. It's 8 a.m. I was like, I don't put that pressure on me. Yeah. And I remember I, I had a, you know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but whatever. I had a tear stick, right? Yeah. And I, I was kind of like experimenting with it in acting class. And so I kind of knew how to kind of use it. But I just remember putting it on my fingers right here. And I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I remember being like, Lauren, uh, when do you plan on cutting the scene so I can, you know, go like this and then go back into the scene? She's like, no, 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 don't, don't, no, no tear stick shit. Just, just do it. Give me the raw emotion. And like, I remember I had the tear stick in, in me. Yeah. And uh, I was going to do it. And then I was like, just trust yourself, homie. Mm -hmm. Just trust you can get there. And if you don't get there, whatever. The emotion is going to come across tears or yeah. not. And then, and then the waterworks started coming. And just seeing you and, and sort yeah. of like playing the reality, like you just said, like, this is our last scene together. This is it. This is it. This is the last time we're going to be on an on my block set, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And this is it. And then it just, it just hit me, bro. It just... You know, there's something powerful about using what's in front of you and what you, 
real, you know, the real uh, emotional life that, that you're going through in life and then incorporating that with your acting in the scene. For me, at least, that's how yeah. I approach stuff. Because because there's, there's nothing more beautiful than the truth, man. No matter how ugly, how beautiful, how whatever, there's nothing more beautiful than the raw truth. Yeah. And that was, we left it there that day, man. Both of us. And then you turn into a gnome. And then I turn into a gnome. <laughs> I have that gnome. Yeah. In my oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Bro, I did a meeting the other day and, and some uh, some fam brings like a, a gnome. And I'm like, why have I seen this gnome? And she's like, it's Juanita. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, they're selling those? I should have brought her. Yeah. Should have brought a little Juanita, bro. Um, so once the show came out, did you ever feel like safety was an issue for you? Like, no. cause, cause for me, like, mm -hmm. like I, I told you, I had that incident and I had to move apartments actually. Yeah. I was in Hollywood and I remember telling Emilio about it. I was like, yeah, I live over here. He said, wait, 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 you live where? He's like, he's like, that's what's up. I'm like, what do you mean? That's what's up. He's like, well, <laughs> and yeah, I was well. like, I was like, okay. Yeah. And then I remember getting home one day after shooting, I think it was the last episode of season one. I was just bald. Mm -hmm. And I remember just seeing some homies waiting for me. I do. I was 19. Right. And I was like, fuck. I was like, I'm not about it. Not about it. Come on, man. So I remember getting a hotel that night. Yeah. And uh, I got a new apartment like a week later. So I was like, bro, I just, listen, man, I, I got enough things on my mind. I got to take care of my family. I got to pay the bill. Like, I don't got time to beef out. I, <laughs> I want to win in life on a big scale. I, yeah. I don't have time for, for, you know, this type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was, it was this, it, just for, just for the shave part. I, when I shaved my head. Just mm -hmm. for that time. And then season two, shaving my head. Yeah. And then season three and season four. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever get tired of it? Uh, shaving your head? I know you got tired of the bald cap. Did yeah, you get tired of that? The, the bald cap was season <laughs> four. And I mean, I, I understood. Did it take you out of the character? Yeah, dude, it's, oh, that sucked. Um, that was awful. I felt like <laughs> mega mind, bro. I had this, <laughs> this giant hair off. But like, I, I, I get it. You know, yeah. that, that's how, that's how it was yeah. scheduled. Um, and then needed to do the bald, the bald <laughs> yeah. cap. Um, bro at least they didn't try to put a wig on you during the the promotions i don't know if you were there remember season one yeah they put dude, a wig on yeah, me and netflix yeah. did and i was like what is this i was like i'm not wearing this you're yeah. not gonna shoot it yeah and they ended up not using it thank yeah. god um but yeah no i wild. uh i never felt scared or threatened um again i i th i i'm very happy and blessed that even though the show blew up and even though you guys kind of like exploded, mm. I feel like uh, Jessica and I sort of like rode on your coattails. So like, mm. I mean, she'd obviously been doing things for, yeah, for a while sure. before. So she kind of like already had experience with it. For me, I was recognition adjacent. Like I'd been around people yeah. um, in Hollywood, mainly in the music mm -hmm. and Latino industry. So I kind of knew a little bit of what, what was going on, never directly towards me. And then when it started coming towards me, it was like gradual, mm. you know, it's gotten to a point where it's like, I can't go anywhere without, and it's nice, you know, but like, yeah. uh, it's nice getting the reservations at the uh, restaurant. No, it's, 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 <laughs> I wouldn't, it's I wouldn't not change nice. it. It's, I'll be real with you. I yeah. wouldn't change it. I, no, I, I, no, I wouldn't no, change no, it. No, 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 no. The people we've gotten to meet, the people we've yes. been able to connect with. Obviously, everything is done for our lives, right? Right, right. right. I, some people are like, oh, I hate the thing. Oh, I hate the thing. It's like, then don't do it, man. Right. What are you right, complaining right, about? Right. Quit it. I, I, when you take the moment to listen to what people, for the most part, and I know that this is a generalization, mm -hmm. but for the most part, when you take the moment to hear what people are saying when they come up to you and to ask for a picture, it's very positive. It's very nice. I mm. never, and I still probably don't consider myself a role model, mm. right? Like that was like, I don't want to be a role model, dude. I'm just doing me. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand how important representation was until it, like it never clicked in my head. Like I never had a role model that I looked up to that I was like, oh, because this person made it that means that I can make it as a Mexican too, right? It was just like, yeah, I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be in show business. Yeah. I never needed, I, Julio never needed I hear you. somebody to look up to in that sense to like mm -hmm. make it so that I could believe in myself to like, as a, as a Mexican to be able to do this, right? I hear you. But I've had plenty of, of, of people come up to me like, yeah. because I saw you, I believe that I could do it. Because I saw mm. you do it, I believe that I could do it. And I'm like, this is important. It's very important. It's crazy, important. right? You don't, you yeah. don't really, it, it took me four years to really understand it. Yeah. Four years to really be like, oh shit, we have a 
we have a very big impact yeah on society and there is we a, res- a very, certain responsibility very, to it yeah exactly and uh i remember going to uh i just recently went to a sunburst youth academy it's like a uh, um, it's sort of like a army military program for kids and, and it gets them and they choose to be there mm-hmm. they say hey i want to be here it'll help me with my credit so so it's all like you know uh but anyway i was there and I, I just remember being there seeing the kids so excited to see me i'm like what are they they're yelling at for me like it's cool you know i'm like saying what's up and they're telling me their dreams and their goals and all of this stuff and i'm like well what's stopping you and they're like well and i'm like hey hey Nothing is stopping you, but come on, I'm you. You look like me. You, if I can do what I'm doing, you can do whatever the hell mm-hmm. you want to do. You could be a CEO, you could be a boss, you could do all this. You know, all your all your craziest dreams can happen. But um, but and and it's important, dude. We we got put on a platform, and it blew up. I didn't think it was gonna. If I'm being honest, I didn't. I didn't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. I was like, at most, like a thousand Instagram followers some some uh footage to send out to directors you know <laughs> yeah and then but this will always be with you for better or worse it will always be with you yeah. um how does that feel knowing that for the rest of your life you know what i'm saying like oh, uh, people will, will always be like oh my blog obviously yeah. you've done big uh other projects selena so many other things just did a, yeah. a movie in guadalajara so which i'm super pumped for um but but these characters that we created, yeah. they have such a special yeah. place. Uh, How does that feel? I have a friend, you? Uh, Patrick Deletterberg. Um, he's a homie from from high school, and you know he went to Carnegie Mellon, and you know great actor. And um, he would always say, "You got to do something in this industry that's undeniable. Mm. You can be good, you can be great. If you do." If you don't do something that's undeniable, it's almost like you didn't exist in this in this town, right? I don't know how much I subscribe to that, mm. um, but we were on a show that will define a certain demographic of people mm. that they will carry this show and these characters for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, and we've created characters. I guess I'll just speak at least how I feel for me. Yeah. I've... <laughs> Dude, let me show you man it's crazy uh you're gonna show me a tattoo someone did someone get their face ta- your face tatted on him yeah bro? man not no just, kidding not just one man like multiple people um and my dad that is my dad wild. collects them my dad that's wild. yeah my dad's like that's my dad's crazy. like anytime that you see that means that somebody at some point like no right like, bro show know. the camera that's crazy right i don't know, I don't know oh my yeah. gosh yeah that is why uh and then like this is another one <sighs> whoa right? yeah yo like i mean dude but if you think about it right so so someone some i mean i have tattoos yeah and I know what yeah that yeah is. i have i have an image on 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 my on my uh on my, on my thigh on and my i part. know what that image means to me mm. Dude, that that means that somebody related with that character, related with this show yeah. so much that they want to keep that with them forever, right? Mm. Those are just some examples of of, of of physical manifestation. I've done something, we've done something mm. with our characters that that's the that's the dream. Yeah. Money, stability, uh, career, these are all fantastic things. But at the end of the day, we want to be. Uh, we want to be uh, immortal in a way, and with our we've, work, we've achieved it. Yeah. Everything on top of this is gravy. Yeah, I want a lot of gravy. <laughs> but, but like, well, we, I was I was gonna you ask know. you that. Some people look up to you. Some obviously from the tattoos. Who do you look up to? Better not say Goku. Uh, <laughs> no, my, 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 yeah. my grandparents, my parents. Mm. Um, I think. Uh, priorities have changed and shifted and there's a lot of there's a lot of different actors that I aspire to be like um, but um, I mean performance wise yeah, yeah like, from the you work know, of you know. course yeah. uh, but who I look up to um, yeah man my own my own my, my grandparents and, and, and my dad yeah. um, as a my mom of course um 
and how I can be better versions of like, I look up to them, but then I'm like, all right, that's the bar. How do I pass that? Yeah. How do I surpass that? Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's, that's, a, I mean, I talk about, we talked about this on a few episodes, but it's like, you always have to chase the greatest version of yourself, or at least a little bit, slightly better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I, we were talking about this the other day. It's like, if I'm not working towards something, if I'm not, whether it's mental, physical, my crap, whatever, business, something, then I feel stagnant. I feel, I feel complacent. I, I feel like I'm ready to create chaos within my life. Mm -hmm. I'll get into trouble. I'll go places I shouldn't be going. I'll be hanging out with people I should not be seeing. And it just takes me away from a path that I, that I know I should be on. You always get that voice. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Why are you going? What are you... And it's like, you know, half the battle is just, just showing up for yourself, man, you know, and it's something that I've learned on, on this ride, uh, you know, being so young on the show, like coming out, there's so many things I, like, I, like I was, we were talking about this the other day, I was like, why didn't I start this podcast the first year? What was I doing? I wasn't doing anything. I was literally, yeah. I was travieso ahí yeah. con las fiestas y todo eso. And I was like, and I don't regret it, you know, well, but, you know, there's just so many times and moments in my life where I'm like, what did I do? Yeah. And also this idea of, 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 uh, metal is more, is most malleable when it's hot, when it's mm -hmm. heated, you know, that's what they say, like hit it when it's hot, you yeah. know, like that's when you can shape it. Don't wait for it to cool. Yeah. Right? Like, like. Yeah, no, I and I give yeah. that advice. I, I, you know, several actors just came up and blew up on on several shows. I hit them up. I'm like, hey, bro, whew, if this was my first season coming out in times mm -hmm. like today, this is exactly what I would do. Yeah, to keep you healthy, to keep you, to keep your life and and prosperous, and to be for you to. This is a really hard career. Mm -hmm. You might be hot one day. You might drop for several years the next. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's it's one of those things where the tienes que poner pilas. You got to focus. You got, it's going to take time. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to wake up early. You're going to have to write 70, 90 pages. They're going to be terrible and you're going <laughs> to rewrite them and we're going to get a redraw. Like it's just, it's, that's the process, but you got to go through it. Cause if you don't, then you're there. What's the saying? There's either the pain of going through it or the pain of regret. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Both will teach you a valuable lesson. I'd rather have the pain of going through it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I, this is the first time in my career right now where I don't know when the next job's coming. This is the very first time ever. Mm -hmm. Season one, uh, obviously we had like the one month where we'd wait after it came out, like, are we going to get picked up? Gonna... Mm -hmm. Picked up year after year after year. And then season four, I had Zodiac, thank God. Mm -hmm. Had Zodiac. And um, I knew I was going to do that. So I was like, all right, did that. I was on Zodiac. Then the next job came. Then the next job came. Muzzle, uh, hombres. And this is the first time where I'm like, wait, where's the next job at? Yeah. And yeah. now, now, now I'm like, wait, what, where's, where's the movie? Where's the show? Where's the, yeah. So I got an audition for, I this got a real, yeah. but that was an offer. Yeah. And you guys gave me up. What? No entiendo. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the first time where I'm like, I got slapped into reality. And, and that's when I hit you up and I was like, bro, let's create our own stuff. Why can't we produce? Why can't we make our own projects? Yeah. We very much can and we, we very much will. We will. <laughs> we will get it done. And for you, I mean, leaving on my block after four years, I know we talk about this all this time, but a lot, a lot of times, but, you know, everywhere you go, the crowd swarms you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when we're together, brother. Yeah. When we're yeah, together, yeah. it's, it's, uh, when it's, when it's, it's pretty when chaotic. it's one of us, it's like a lot of yeah. lucky lose. Yeah. When if it's, oh, when it's a whole cast, more, dude, it's a bro, It's, it's, <laughs> at Universal yeah. Studios. Yeah, one yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Dinner, man. Like, dinner, if, if, yeah. if three of us get together for dinner, it's, uh, it's, yeah. So, so, you know, and we, we talk about this all the time, and I'll just flat out say it's like, you know, the execs, the people who are the shot callers in this industry might not exactly have seen that show. No, it's, it's not a very much gringo show. My you know, dad makes the joke, but you know it's very true. He's like, it's like, every time I go with you anywhere, I was just in Europe, yeah. uh, Italy, Spain, mm. Greece, uh, France, the mm. UK. Um, 
We were we were right, in don't Florence. Tell me we were in Florence, and the waiter comes out, and he goes, "Hey, are you so and so?" And I said, wow. "Yeah." One of our cooks is, uh, I think he was from uh, Guatemala or, mm. or El Salvador, mm. uh, and he knows who you are. Would you mind taking a picture with mm. him? And I was like, "Yeah, for sure." So yeah. you know, I go back into the kitchen, I take a picture with his homie, yeah. uh, and my dad's like. It's always the valet. It's always the cook. It's mm. always a server. And he's like, and that's something that you should be proud of. Like the wow. fact that it's like la gente, la gente que Hard trabaja. working people. Like, you know, those is like, yeah, I mm. get it that you, you're going to go to another general meeting at X, Y, or Z studio. And they're mm. like, oh my God. Yeah. We saw the numbers. They're great. Mm. I've never watched the show, but my daughter says, <laughs> says that her best friend, Jimena loves yeah. it. Right. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, uh, there is a very specific demographic that watched mm. our show, but I'm damn proud of that demographic, mm. you know? Super proud, um, right? And uh, it, it is... Uh, is it frustrating? It's, it's frustrating. frustrating. It's, it's frustrating it's for very, me. It's very frustrating. Um, I'm not going to lie. You know, it is... I get, the, I, I get the name of the game. I get it. And I'm... F it. I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to put in the work. Mm -hmm. it, might, it might feel, I guess you could say... Uh, like it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. but uh, if this is the name of the game, I'm gonna play it because I love this game. I'm gonna win, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm not waiting for the next job. I'm creating the next job. Yeah, producing my own projects, writing my own stuff, getting my material in front of the eyeballs that I need to see it. Because yeah. there's some directors and producers that they just have too much going on. So literally, my next thing after uh, after we wrap up the podcast, I'm I'm I already told you like I'm filming an introduction. A one minute introduction. And I'm sending it to all my favorite directors because yeah, maybe they just don't have the time to see it. Maybe they don't know who I, that I exist, but I need them to see that like yeah. your art impacted me as an artist. Your, your movies got me to where, uh, got me through some dark times. Mm -hmm. Tim Burton's movies, man. Those things, uh, when I was a kid, I had really messed up skin. I had like vitiligo and you know, I had, I had messed up health issues and, uh, I, I didn't connect with nobody. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching Tim Burton movies and seeing the monsters. And I just remember feeling like a little monster, man. I was like nine. And strangely enough, people talk about representation. I felt represented by the monsters. Yeah. <laughs> I felt connection because these characters just wanted connection and love and, and to be heard and seen. His movies got me out of such a dark place in my life. As strange and weird and corny yeah, as that yeah. sounds, no, no, sometimes no, it's the corny things in life that that keep us going. And thanks to Tim Burton, man, like my my life, uh, I don't know, man. I, I was just going through it when I was a kid, bro. Yeah. And and now that like I we we did a show, we got we we got like you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We're not coming in empty-handed like, oh, I want a hand. It's like, no, no, no. No, I, man. And we talk about this a lot. People hit you up. People hit me up all the time. Oh, come promote my movie, Julio. Come to the premiere, por favor, man. We need your numbers. And it's like... It's like, we're, we're good enough to be the poster boy, but not to be the leading man or something, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So you want you want us to show up to help you promote the film. And and we do. And we do. Yeah. But you, Well, you, we go you, to promote and help the creatives, like yeah. the directors, of course. the fucking homies that are in yeah. it, you know, like. But at the same time, it's like, Por qué no? why didn't you guys send me an audition for this? Why didn't mm -hmm. you guys read me? I would have loved yeah. to. I'll audition all day, every day. Yeah. I didn't even get the tape for that. Why didn't you guys send that on my way? Yeah. And but you uh, want me to show up to sell it. But you him. want me to show exactly. Because you know that I'll get eyeballs on it. Yeah. Exactly. I don't I'll never understand That's it. That's the game, um, man. That's the game. And you can and you know, we can we can sit and bitch and complain about it. Or, or, or we or can make it. our own projects. Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. Play or the play, game. Play. Make our own know? stuff. Um it is it is what it is. And I think that there is something to be said about calling it out. But also yeah. like the game's been going on since 1910. Oh, for sure, bro. Yeah. You know, oh, since 1910. Sure. But that being said, uh, I, I, you know, man, so when I was, when I was starting off in this game, I auditioned for, for so many, you know, Latin uh, casting directors, directors, callback, whatever. No one gave me the chance. No one trusted me. Ah, this guy's got no credits. Ah, no. You know, it's strange that the person who gave me a chance was a white Caucasian lady. <laughs> Named Lauren Unerick, yeah. who said, "Those are the guys. Yeah. They're gonna lead the show. That's gonna impact society. Yeah. Those I people with no credit. That kid with yeah. no credits, chip tooth. All because of that. she can't take that chance. 
Mm. You know, I think that there is something to say that she could, she was given the authority. But she could have much her. very gave an offer. Of course. She could have gotten, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, of course. I don't know. Yeah, she she could have gotten yeah. Danny Trejo for Spooky. Yeah, she could have <laughs> gotten uh, uh, Bonita. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Um, you know, she had the power and the opportunity and she did something great with that, you know. But I wouldn't necessarily need to throw... I'm not uh, mad about it. I'm not, it's under, just, it's just, it's our, interesting to you know, see. Yeah, the, 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 you the, know what the I'm Latino, saying. The Latino community also has something to prove, not only to themselves but to the to the execs mm. and the people that are giving them the money. Yeah, right. So I think that there was it, maybe it's changing, but there was a time where it's like, hey, we as casting directors or as Latino creatives or are are given this opportunity for the first time, or maybe this is our third job, but we don't want to mess it up, so we I, need I to. You prove and perform and no blah, blah. I, I understand yeah but the what is it called the uh you got to break the wheel you got to break the cycle yeah. I, just, I just recently signed a a, a book deal with with a super mm -hmm. crazy big publisher and they sent me off they sent me a uh, material from like well-established writers mm -hmm. and because i'm not the greatest writer <laughs> uh it's not a ghost writer she's getting credit all of that it's collaboration i already wrote the whole story i'm just giving it to her and i'm like hey you're a real writer write it this uh, is my story yeah this yeah. is a story 40 pages you know in depth um but i had had a lot of options with really well-established writers you know who i went to bro i went to a, a colombian writer in her 20s never has had anything published uh aspiring writer but great, her sample great yeah. writer read her sample read her work read her material I hopped on a Zoom with her. I was like, why isn't anybody giving you a new opportunity? Like, you're you're really good. She's like, well, you know, no one no one will take that shot on me. I'm like, I'm going to take that shot. Yeah. I'm going to give you that opportunity. And I'm going to create that because that was that that's what happened to me. And I want to return the favor. Dude, that's dope. I didn't so know that. That's dope. I, 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 you know, um, if I'm not just about to give opportunity to anybody, right? You got to be great at what you do cool respectful and a mm -hmm. hard worker and if i see that done deal that's yeah. my person yeah and uh yeah i don't know I, i'm not i'm not in any way shape or form mad at the at, 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 at you know latino community and cinema not at all i understand the game um but the game can be changed the game can be changed i think the game and is we changing. can change it and yeah. we will fucking change yeah. it the game is changing and it's and it's slowly evolving um, I, I have seen it go from when I was doing music videos to be like there was this sense in probably even before, but when I got into it, say 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. where it was like, I'm the only Latino that's allowed in this room, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> it's like, oh. you know? Yeah. Um, Chip and Beetle what are, <laughs> looking at me like that. You know, it's yeah. like. Hi, I'm uh, hi, I'm Julio. Hi, yeah. nice to meet you. I'm I'm uh, where are you from, Mexico? Oh no, you can't be here. Why? Mm. Because I'm the Mexican in this room. <laughs> <laughs> there can be more than one. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I'm sorry, though they can't be in more than one. Wow. Um, mm. and that's changed. I feel it has you know, changed now. Yeah, it's, I'll, I'll it's be, changed. It's because of what we were talking about. Like we all support each other's projects, and we're very excited when when one of us like books something. We're like, heck yeah, yeah, hey, dude. Like we'll yeah. all we're, yeah. dude. The, the the Latino community still, at least in front of the camera, yeah. is like. Oops. It's like this big. I'm no, pretty I sure know. that we have everyone's phone number, you know, bro, and we I, hit them up and they hit us up and we're like, yo, what are you doing? How are you doing? Just, this and that. Bro, when I did Bad yeah. Hombres, I, I told you about that. I was like, I think I might do this movie. And you're like, yeah, you're like that's what's up, homie. You're like, I was going to do that. That's a badass script. Yeah. You're like, you should do it. Yeah. And I was like, well, I was like, why is who you, who you, you know, I, I, I was like, because, you know, there's that sense of like, yeah. um, you know, as act, you, with actors, sometimes they're like, they don't share anything. Right. But you right. were like, dude, do it. It's a badass script. It's like, I script. can't do it. I'm shooting something else. Yeah. Like, you should do it. And I did it. And I was like, oh, it was the first time where I was like, huh. I was like, the game has changed. It's changing yeah. and, and it's evolving. And I like it. Uh, I'm here to stay. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, there's, don't get me wrong. There's still competition. There's still competition. And, th and that has to, that has yeah. to stay there because that, that's what pushes you. Yeah. But there is, there's a lot more, um, um, I love that competition though, bro. Yeah. No, como se dice, echando porras, no? Like, mm. like there's more, um, 
moral support, mm. right? Like, oh, I really wanted that, but I can't mm. wait to see what you do with that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, There's yeah, a yeah. lot more of that going no, on totally. instead of like, and I'm never speaking to you ever again. <laughs> yeah, you that and yeah, it, right. No, a hundred percent, man. What's next for Julio Macias? Four years of a hit Netflix series, right? Uh, number one on the charts each and every year, except for the fourth year, I think. Squid Games just was unbeatable that year. <laughs> like, <laughs> rightfully so. Squid Games is amazing. Yeah. But what's the next phase? Phase one, done. Industry, yeah. four years, broken. Uh, um, all what's next? Yeah, I think that it's... Uh, uh, first, it is, a, is, it is a continue... Like we were talking about, it's a continuation of playing this game. Uh, I, 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 I like the game, you know? Um, I... I you know, as perverse and fucked up as it can be, it's also uh, interesting once you find the groove of like, oh, mm. okay, I got a rhythm. I have to uh, audition. I have to play these characters, and then I get offered this role, and then I knock it out the park, and then I do 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 do, and yeah. then I got to audition, no, yeah. and then break the pattern. So I, I like th I like that game. I like that navigation. Yeah. Um. So the that's going to be a continuation, uh, you know, um, developing mm. my, and then my developing yeah, projects. De well, no, together. So, yeah. Yes. So developing boxing, my, movie. uh, my skills as an actor, mm. um, because that's something that I want to do till I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Right. Um, I 100% want to be the 120 year old actor that they wheel in They're like why is <laughs> yeah. he here he's like dude he was somebody 100 years ago <laughs> and it's like <laughs> right um you look at the end of yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be that right uh, or ho i hope to be that yeah uh on another level i want to uh go back to where i started i started mm. producing mm. i started you know, um, wanting to create the world from afar. And that doesn't mm. mean directing. Like, um, I have, uh, I could never direct, bro. I have a huge, huge respect for, for straight up writers and straight up directors. Like your art is so specific. And I, like you were talking about ego. Like I, <laughs> silly to say this as we're sitting here talking about, ourselves our glory to, to say that we don't have ego. our glory like, I, I know that i have ego but compared to life. the ego that a lot of people have <laughs> like i don't have <laughs> i guess maybe the self-confidence to say that mm. i can direct something mm. but i do love to see the machine work absolutely from 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 the outside yeah. i love how um each department works in 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 tangent with the other one and how mm. it all kind of comes together right I, mm. I i um so i love the idea of developing stories but not only just developing the story with the writer seeing how the director is going to bring in his vision and which cinematographer are we going to use which camera operators are we going to use which cameras are we going to use and then from there what lighting sources are we going to use are mm. we going to use the sun are we going to use you know these lights um what are the actors going to bring in and what are we going to dress them around? Where are we going to set them? Mm. Hey, how can we find this location? I found this location in New Zealand. Well, can we bring our entire new team to New Zealand? Well, yeah, because there's a, there's a, there's a tax incentive that we can use there and there's already infrastructure that's set so that we can bring all of the crew and they have a fantastic crew there. Um, what, uh, what, uh, are we going to go CG? Are we going to go, uh, practical on this? Like, yeah. I love that rompecabezas. What's the word? Uh, yeah. Puzzle. I puzzle. love yeah. that puzzle. Putting the pieces together. Putting those pieces together. And seeing so, the final product. Yeah. yeah. So I think producing is very much in my future. Um, not because I necessarily want to put myself in more things, but because I love the idea of bringing this collage together and yeah. seeing it happen. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> seeing it map out. Yeah. In a way, I'm. I'm in, I'm in charge of all of it, yeah. but I'm also not in charge of anything in particular. Yeah. I can let artists and craftsmen do their things and trust them mm. to do their things and then watch it all kind of grow and build. And, you know, I've done that so many times with, um, sketches and music videos and shorts and one particular feature. Um, but I want to, 
I want to scale that up the same way that I scaled up my, my acting career. I want to yeah. scale up my producing, producing game. Career, yeah. Right. So I think that the next, uh, incarnation of Julio is yes, you're going to see him on, on the, you know, like the rookie, <laughs> yeah. um, or you're going to see him on more, uh, television shows and hopefully yeah. projects and stuff like that but but what you're going to start seeing a lot more is um produced by julio macias so you're going to start seeing my name oh. more than just my face mm. uh because uh, yeah i love i love uh the puzzle building the world building and i love working with uh artists and and, yeah. and 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 collaborating and and hey let's sit down for dinner and figure yeah, this bro. out right or like it's, you've always been passionate about each and everyone's skill always and you've yeah. always respected ev from sound to the light to literally everybody you're always you're always curious on set yeah. you're always seeing how everybody works how everybody like is so uh skilled at what they do and you're you'd always ask questions i remember seeing you on set you'd you'd always see the shot you'd always hover the director and go oh it's badass you know like you always, you you always gave off the producer energy. <laughs> so like, you know what yeah. I mean. So I I one hundred percent see that. Um, and that also gives us an opportunity not only to tell stories that I find interesting, but also to give opportunities to um, the people that we were saying. You know, yeah. why, why hasn't this person give, been given yeah. a chance for an opportunity? It's like, mm. yeah. So. <sighs> Speaking of producing, last question. When are we going to produce our own tequila line? Bro? I mean, <laughs> come on. Paul Yo. Wesley, Ian Summerholder, they got their own, uh, okay. I think it's tequila. The, then you got the guys from Breaking Bad. They got, they got. Come uh, on. Aaron, Somos Latinos nosotros, hermano. Okay. Come on. So, we got to create some the, Diaz the, Brothers the tequila. Diaz, <laughs> Diaz Brothers tequila. No, no, no. Hey, and Santos tequila. <laughs> That'd be uh, funny. I'd like to call it Primos, bro. Primos. Uh, primos I like mezcal. That primos mezcal. Um, <laughs> nice. Because like we, we consider ourselves Primos, but also because yeah. it's Primo, right? It's yeah. premium, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, man. I You know, when we were in Guadalajara, um, you know, I, I'm... I'm uh, grew to really uh appreciate and 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 enjoy working with this guy ruben the the director of our of our film mm -hmm. um but he's like an all-around business guy and he has mm -hmm. some connections to the agave business down in in, in in jalisco so we might have to do that we might have to if, we might listen, have to drop we might have to do it. on on the second season on my part we're going to be promoting our uh <laughs> what are we going to call it primos mezcal primos mezcal and uh <laughs> And, and, hands, our, and hand sanitizers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, bro, I'm, I'm, it's always nice to see you. It's always nice to get back together and, and hang out with like family and uh, relive some moments with the fans, right? And uh, I'm excited to see your future. I'm excited to grow with you. I'm excited yeah, to, to see uh, who we can become in 10 years. This is the game. We love the game. And we're, we're on the journey. Not just with us, but with the fans, with the people who support us and, and our careers.